Hello, welcome back to my channel. This is Bluefin Design and I'm Nikhil. And uh, as you may already know, we are working on a UX case study on the topic language translation. And if you are new to this video, um, I would recommend uh, watching all my previous videos about uh, language translation and the UX case study where I have started sharing my entire design process from research, um, design, um, ideation and then all the way to testing. So while right now we are in the research phase and I've already shared a couple more videos um, about market research and user research. So I'd recommend you start from the first one. So in this video, we're going to be talking about user interviews or one-on-one -on -one interviews. Um, if you want to watch my previous video, which was on competitive analysis, I leave a link down below in the description. So please go check it out as well. So let's get started. In this video, we're going to be covering what is a user interview, why to do user interviews, uh, when to do it and how to do it. And also we'll talk about some limitations of user interviews and do stick around till the end uh, because I'm going to be sharing some bonus tips to keep in mind as well. So what is an user interview? A user interview is basically one of the user research methods where the researcher asks one user um, questions about a certain topic. Most likely they are the topic which uh, the researcher is working on uh, with the sole goal of learning about the user's experience and their views about that topic. So in this case, I'm working on the project for language translation. So in my user interviews, I'm going to be talking to the user and asking them uh, about their views and their experience um, in using language translation. So these interviews are a quick and easy way to collect user data uh, because the format that can be used in the user interviews is basically a conversation in the form of questions and answers. Um, there are certain uh, rules um, that you need to think of uh, when constructing uh, or uh, driving that conversation. So we'll talk about that in just a moment. You would think why you should be doing user interviews for your project. Um, so user interviews give insights into what users think about, let's say a website, an application, a product, or even a process or a workflow, which includes certain multiple steps. So it's important to know what your users think about your product if you're working on a product already and to gain their feedback and their problems and their pain points. So you can know uh, and understand better about how to improve your users problems. So the users can share what content is memorable to, to them on a website, uh, what they think is important. Um, and uh, if there are any ideas for improvement that you need to take care of. When to do a user interview? Um, I think uh, there's three uh, times when uh, you might need to uh, do user interviews. Uh, one, the first one is before the product or the website is ready. So you just started out working on a product and you want to know uh, what to solve and what to build or design. So I think at this point, it's a good idea to reach out to your potential users and get their pain points and their feedback to actually then formulate uh, your scope for the product. The second time is to validate certain observations that you have already made or certain research that you've already done and uh, the workflow that you already built. So uh, in case you want to validate that workflow or your uh, process, um, I think uh, that's uh, also a good time to reach out to the users. And uh, lastly, uh, you can also do a user interviews um, as a usability test to collect user feedback on the product or a prototype that is already made. So when the users uh, use that product or a prototype, uh, they can provide meaningful feedback for you to then go back and then uh, iterate on that feedback. So let's talk about how you should be doing user interviews. So I've, uh, I've actually added some pointers here to take care of. So the first one is to set goals for the interview. Um, so as I said earlier, um, user interviews can be a really good way to collect uh, data from the users. Uh, you really need to think about uh, how you should be driving that conversation. 
so uh, it's a good idea to set goals for that conversation um, and uh, to set that goal um, I think it's better to understand what you want or what your stakeholders want from the product and so thinking on those lines about what you want or what your stakeholders want uh, may help in uh, setting the goals for the interview which in turn will help uh, getting meaningful feedback that you are actually looking for. The other thing to keep in mind is that um, it's uh, it's as important to make the user uh, feel comfortable as possible. So um, it's it's important to make them feel heard um, as if uh, their uh, feedback is uh, valuable to to you, and that's the whole point of reaching out to them in the first place. Um, let them finish their thoughts uh, do not interrupt them because uh, it might break the chain of thoughts that they were thinking on and you might lose on important information. Um, be authentic and uh, do not fake empathy because it's it's easy to recognize when uh, when the other person is actually faking empathy and that uh, actually may drive the conversation in another direction altogether. It's important to prepare the questions beforehand and uh, even going one step further and actually uh, get the feedback from the stakeholders um, on those questions before the interview. It's a good idea to get feedback from the stakeholders because uh, then you can reach an agreement about these about the questions that you will be asking the users and the potential feedback that, that you will be getting from them. And although you are making a list of questions, um, it's it's important to anticipate different responses from the users because not all users are the same and not all users will respond to the same question in the same way. So um, I think it's also important to construct the follow up questions based on those different responses. Do make sure to ask simple, open ended and non leading questions. One way to think about this is that um, if your question can be responded in just a single word uh, answer like a yes or a no, uh, then I think it's important to rethink that question or just rephrase it. Um, for example, let's say uh, I'm testing for, or uh, I'm actually formulating some questions for a product that I uh, want some feedback on. And um, one of the questions uh, to start with in the interview would be, uh, do you use this product? And the user can then answer in a simple way as like a yes or a no. And that's not as useful. So uh, the better way to, re to phrase that question would be, how is your experience using this product? And I think keeping this question open-ended uh, gives the user the opportunity to explore or expand on their feedback as well. And thereby giving you more feedback. Also, um, asking simple questions is, I think, uh, more important as well, um, because you want to make sure that your question or the context of your question is actually communicated uh, well to the user. If they understand your question really well, uh, they'll be able to answer in a way that you understand as well. Some of the limitations that you should be taking care of are that um, human memory is flawed. <laughs> Um, that like we don't always recall events as accurately as we think we we do. Um, this can be um, a good surprise to uh, some of you, but I think uh, there's a lot of research already done on this. The other point is the participants or the users may leave out certain minor details that uh, they think are small and are not needed, but then they might be just as useful for you in terms of the feedback. So um, if you come across such scenarios, um, make sure you ask again and ask the user to expand on that particular scenario and to um, explain to you in like every detail that they can remember. Um, one other thing, and I think this is more important uh, to keep in mind, is that uh, not all participants are comfortable uh, sharing their experiences with complete strangers. So if you're meeting the user for the first time, and obviously they're meeting you for the first time as well, uh, not everybody is share like is, is comfortable sharing their experiences so openly. So I think this goes back to uh, the fact that it's very important to make the user feel comfortable uh, even before you start your questions. 
take some time before you start the questionnaire to open up uh, or give the user a chance to open up with you uh, in terms of certain icebreakers or certain conversations so that they can open up a little bit. And I think that that goes a long way as well. And talking from experience, I just had the opportunity uh, to, to do user interviews at my work. And I think this uh, one important thing to, um, to, that I actually took care of was to try my best to make the user feel comfortable. And I think that helped us in getting um, some uh, the feedback that we were looking for. So as I mentioned earlier, uh, some of the bonus tips about user interviews that I think will help you are choosing the correct location for the interviews. And I know this may sound um, far-fetched in, in today's times, um, but I think it's important to just leave a thought on these as well. So choosing um, a location um, in terms of, um, let's say like where your user feels more comfort. So it's not about where you feel comfortable as a researcher, um, but I think it's important to think about where your user feels comfortable so that they can share more feedback. Um, it's also important to, uh, to remember the context and the environment about like where the interview will take place. Um, it's, if, it's, if the environment is actually full of distractions, so that may not be helpful as well. And uh, the third point is kind of similar as well. Um, it's uh, environmental bias. So uh, what I mean by this is um, it's important to, uh, to, to just uh, take a look around at the physical environment where the interview is going to be taken care of, is, is going to uh, take place. Uh, for example, if you are interviewing for a product or an application or a website for um, let's say a coffee chain or a coffee company, it may not be the best idea to do that at a Starbucks location because that might be um, there. There may be a bias, and as Starbucks may be a competitor to your product, uh, that's just an example. But uh, you get what you get the point, right? Um, also, one bonus tip, uh, and I think very important bonus tip would be to to perform mock interviews with your teammates. Like if you're working in a team, um, I think this will be super helpful in making you, the researcher, feel comfortable about asking questions to the users. So uh, if you are making the user feel comfortable, um, performing mock interviews will make you feel comfortable. So thank you so much for watching this video. Um, I hope all of this information is helpful for you in your project. And if you have any questions, uh, do let me know down in the comments. I'll try my best to answer those as well. And if you want to reach out to me and talk to me, I'll leave a, li a link down in the description where you can schedule a 30 minute session or a 60 minute session with me where we can actually talk about um, any topic uh, design related that you have in mind. So that's it for this video. Uh, do come and hang out with me on Instagram. Uh, that's my handle, uh, bluefin.design. Uh, do subscribe to my channel if you like the content and share this video with your network of fellow designers who think who you think may be benefited from this content. Thank you so much for watching.